This story is brought to you courtesy of our listeners and friends. It is because of you this podcast thrives. If you'd like to learn more about the show, visit fictionwritersgroup.com. You can participate in our flash fiction prompts, as well as grab some merch while you're there. Use the code PODCAST for a 20% discount. Koi Pond by Carrie Zilka. Melissa stood outside, the cold air softly kissing her bare shoulders. She gazed upward at the inky sky and watched the bright bits of burning leaves fall slowly through the darkness towards her face. Such a strange place, she muttered. This land so unlike her own with their trees made of cold fire, delicate flames. She turned back to the expansive house, her slippered feet quiet on the cobblestones. She made her way through the kitchen entrance and headed towards the ballroom. Markham's party was in full swing and she did not want to seem rude. She made a face at the thought of entering the massive room filled with noise and glittery people and music and the glowing layers of perfume that had driven her to seek fresh air in the first place. She turned left into a hallway, and then a right, and then another right, and then a left, and stopped. Looking around, she tilted her head to try and hear the music, but she was lost. Hopelessly lost in the maze of the mansion. Perfect, she muttered, annoyed at herself. The hallway she was in seemed to border on an outdoor space and her eyes were drawn to the lovely koi pond in the center of the space. Oddly out of place, yet so perfectly placed in a glass room with a bed and wardrobe lacking any sort of ceiling. She moved to the glass door and tried to open it. Heavy and cumbersome, she threw her back into it. An odd scent filtered through her nose. A scent she was familiar with, having grown up in a land of swampy rivers and bayous. The smell was of decay. The cloying humidity hit her, minuscule beads of sweat forming on bare skin. Despite the smell, she was drawn to the water feature. Kidney-shaped with a tumbling waterfall in the corner, huge koi fish swam lazily in the murk. The water looked like velvet. She sat on the ornate marble bench near the edge and shrieked as a beautiful face materialized beneath the surface of the pond. She grabbed up her skirt and made to bolt, but the desperation in the voice behind her brought her to a halt. Please. The woman had risen out of the water to the waist. She'd extended a slender hand imploringly. Please help. Melissa turned back. What is this? What is going on here? Markham is what's going on here. The woman's lip trembled. Please, please help me get out of here. Confusion caused her to make another face. What? Why can't you leave? He's bound me to this infernal pond. Please, I can't leave on my own. Well, what do you need for me? The woman turned her gaze to a small box sitting on an ornate table at the far side of the pond. Melissa realized how young this woman was. She was barely a girl. Delicate features aged by desperation. Please, there's a bracelet in the box. I cannot retrieve it. It's set too far from the water. He put it just out of reach for me so that I could know my freedom was close, but just too far. She turned huge, soulful eyes back to Melissa, tears welling in them. Melissa moved to the table and looked at the box, alarm bells ringing in the back of her head. Something was very off about the whole situation. She paused, racking her brain. Please, please just open the box. He's cursed me and keeps me for his own concubine. Melissa turned back to the woman. From where she was standing, she could see into the water. She raised her hand to cover her mouth to keep from screaming. The woman's body was beautiful, perfectly sculpted, but the form beneath the surface of the water was hideous, bone and flesh streaming in the water's current. It's the curse, the girl spat. Only when he comes and he puts the bracelet on my wrist do my legs form again. But you, if you could give it to me, I can escape. He uses me and then he puts me away like a little toy. Anguish crumpled her face and she reached towards her, begging. Melissa turned back to the box. A plain wooden box with only one rune carved into the top. She reached forward and touched the sides of the lid with two fingers. Taking a breath, she raised the lid. A gold bracelet, delicate and almost fragile looking, lay on a bed of red velvet. She couldn't believe something so simple could provide such magic. Please, the woman breathed behind her. Melissa picked up the bracelet and turned towards her. 
She slowly extended her arm and the woman eagerly snatched it from her. She slipped it on over her hand and threw back her head, long dark hair fanning out like a crown of triumph. Her waist seemed to grow downward, skin forming over slender legs and feet. She laughed, a deep, satisfied laugh, and stepped out of the water. Moving quickly, she went to a wardrobe and slipped on an ornate dress. Ugh, oh, I can't thank you enough, she said over her shoulder as she buttoned up her bodice. I can't believe such evil exists to keep a young girl captive for his own pleasure in such a morbid way. Melissa shook her head in disgust. I'll definitely be returning to my home after all this madness. The woman turned and began to speak. Her voice stopped abruptly and she narrowed her eye. He's coming, she whispered. Melissa turned her head towards the door and hallway. There were indeed voices making their way towards the koi pond. She turned back towards the woman with the intent to flee, but the woman had disappeared. She looked around in confusion, jumping violently as several men flooded into the space. Where is she? Markham shouted. Who? Your sex slave? Your concubine? She shouted back, her chest flushing with angry red. Ha! Is that what she told you? You fool! It's absolutely outrageous to keep someone locked up like that and to use dark magic. What is wrong with you? Is that how your country treats its women? If so, then I'm... Her words were systematically cut off by the gloved hand around her throat. You stupid wench! Markham's face was close to hers, wine-soaked breath warming her cold lips, eyes golden and furious. Do you know what you did? You released one of the most violent succubi in history. She doesn't just drain you. She rips your life force from you. She destroys you as she steals your soul. Agony, pain, suffering, hours of torment before she finally ends it. Did you even look in the pond? Did you even see the skulls of those that have gone before? I, 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 di I didn't know. She gasped for breath. His eyes softened for a moment, and he let her go. It's no matter. We found her once. We'll find her again. He turned back to his men. Party's over, boys. Tonight, we hunt. The end. I might make a part two to that story, because I think that was kind of an interesting little tidbit. Maybe... Maybe of the chase as they hunt her down, or maybe as Melissa decides to go after her on her own and capture her herself. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. These short stories are fascinating for that. So, again, this came out of a prompt. I could not find which prompt because it must have been quite a while ago. But if you go to fictionwritersgroup.com, you also can participate and come up with some neat stories and Anywho, thanks for listening. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to allow me to bend your ear with this tale of, of koi fish and succubi and idiot girls. So if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a share. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is that you listen to music, you will find me. A Creative Mind Fiction Podcast.